My friends, believe it or not, AMD is now starting to struggle because today's Core i5 processor by the blue giant Intel is putting some immense pressure on more than just one AMD offering. Today we are taking a look at the Intel Core i5 12600K, probably the most exciting model of the Alder Lake series I've introduced you to so far. Our eyes are no longer on quote unquote lame 6 cores and 12 threads, which we usually come to expect from a Core i5, but some incredible 10 cores along with 16 threads. Intel apparently is really giving it all right here and that at an attractive price point. According to the MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price were supposed to spend 289 US dollars on the 12600K. The current street price is at 290 to 300 dollars in February 2022. Purely out of habit, one would immediately compare that with AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X. That one currently can be had for a similar amount of money, 290 to 310 dollars. It does come with 6 cores and 12 threads though, definitely less than what's offered by the 12600K. Very well, so let's climb the next ladder and compare against the Ryzen 7 5800X by the competition. You'd be shelling out between $350 to $370 for that one, which certainly is noticeably more than what the 12600K costs. But would you look at that? Even the 5800X with just 8 cores and 16 threads cannot match the core and thread count of the new Core i5 processor part of the Alder Lake lineup. So in terms of pricing, Intel is cleverly placing the 12600K pretty much in between Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 while being equipped with a higher core count. So one thing you can definitely look forward to, we are being offered one hell of an unexpectedly exciting battle today. This may or may not push AMD back to being the underdog for a while again, but there surely has to be at least one downside to the 12600K, right? A huge thank you goes out to my Spartan bro, Yargios over at the hardware shop Equipper for getting a hold of these products for my tests. Without him, my channel would be a lot emptier than it is now. This by the way is a voluntary thank you, I haven't been asked to do so, and I'm neither being paid nor do I get any advantages by doing so. Hashtag not sponsored. For a change we need to take a close look at what comes included this time around. While both the 12600K and 5800X come without any CPU cooler included, there in fact is one included with the Ryzen 5 5600X, and that certainly can help save money with quite a few budget PC builds. However, the majority doesn't really pay too much attention to that, so I'll not focus too much on that fact. What's quite special is that while we are within the transitional phase with Alder Lake, we are given the choice to go with two different memory types. You either stick with a noticeably cheaper, common, older DDR4 RAM or you get yourselves a motherboard with DDR5 slots and go all in, which will cost a ton more cash of course. I decided to go for the latter to really test Alder Lake the way it's meant to be run. This also means I had to wait a long time until the products could be delivered to me. DDR5 has been out of stock for a very long time. Let's take a brief look at the specs. Intel has finally been able to mass produce with their 10 nanometer process. It's been years and now it's finally here, a huge milestone. Unfortunately, Intel has a bad habit of almost constantly requiring a new socket to go along with the new generation, even though this time it kinda makes sense. Quite uncommon for a Core i5 CPU, we're being offered 10 cores and 16 threads, which sounds weird at first, especially if you've only been used to classic CPU core thread layouts so far. This is because Intel now split their new Alder Lake chips into performance and efficiency cores. Those 10 cores of the 12600K are made up of 6P cores and 4E cores. The at first glance strange sounding thread count is the result of P cores offering two threads per core via hyperthreading, whereas E cores only offer one thread. Furthermore, performance and efficiency cores come with vastly different clock speeds. E cores clock significantly lower. For my tests, I've once again gone with a Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR5 motherboard. 
Originally, I opted to go with a different board, but it was out of stock. For the RAM, it's the G-Skill Trident Z5 DDR5 6000 MHz with 32GB of capacity. Sadly, the platform, at least with the combination I went for with the board and RAM, doesn't seem to be able to handle 6000 MHz just yet, which is why I had to content myself with 5800 MHz instead. The 12600K is being cooled by the Be Quiet Pure Loop 360mm AIO liquid cooler. This time around, that cooler should have an easy time cooling the CPU. And as for the last piece of the puzzle, the graphics card, as always, my RTX 3090 to avoid most of the bottlenecks without having to reduce graphics details all across the board. At full load, hardware info is reading out some interestingly stable clock speeds. Not sure if those are 100% correct at this time. Anyway, those P-cores clock in at 4.5 GHz, while those slower E-cores max out at 3.6 GHz. The max achievable boost clock in my case is 4.9 GHz. Practically identical clock speeds to full load are being read out in-game. Fascinating how strangely those clock speeds are being read out. Now before we jump into the test results, I'd like to clearly point out that all other platforms were tested with DDR4 memory of course, and that's at 3200 MHz and 16 GB, whereas for Alder Lake I've gone with DDR5, 5800 MHz and 32 GB. I did pay real close attention though that the capacity in itself never was a limiting factor in the benchmarks I carried out. These are my test results. There's a lot to talk about here, still I'll try to keep it as short as possible. What the 12600K is offering is nothing short of amazing. In fact, Intel with their 12600K is apparently going as far as shooting themselves in the foot because for gamers it starts to make even less sense to spend the premium on the 12700K-KF or 12900K. 
doesn't matter where you look, in the vast majority of games tested, the noticeably cheaper 12600K keeps up with those significantly more expensive 12700KF and 12900K shockingly well. Any differences are practically negligible except for a few outliers. If your main focus lies on more raw performance and productivity though, then it does make sense to grab the i7 or i9. But things get a lot more interesting when taking the one so powerful competition, AMD, into the equation. It makes a lot of sense to compare with a Ryzen 5 5600X being positioned in a similar price tier. The 5600X does, however, visibly struggle with its 6 cores as opposed to those 10 on the 12600K. This understandably leads to the 12600K not only overtaking the Ryzen 5 in aspects such as gaming, but also in terms of productivity, rendering and the like. It's not just that the core count is higher on Intel side, but every single core simply is faster as well, since they've really improved single core performance drastically. Which is one reason why even the Ryzen 7 5800X, part of the next performance tier, is starting to sweat. That one still comes with less cores than what the 12600K is equipped with. 8 cores and 16 threads simply are not the same as 10 cores and 16 threads, not to speak of the fact that the single core performance being on a whole different level. This means that Intel with ease leaves behind both the 5600X as well as 5800X in close to every single discipline there is. There are only few exceptions, and even then, the slightly higher price point of the 5800X should be considered. Of course, we should not forget motherboard pricing, but that's up for debate. So if you ask me, Intel has clearly unleashed a new mid-range beast, which not only poses a serious threat to AMD, but to Intel's very own CPU lineup as well. It's a bit of a dangerous game to play. In the performance tiers Core i7, i9, as well as Ryzen 9, Intel and AMD are putting up more of a fight. In the Ryzen 5 and Core i5 tier though, in my opinion, the obvious winner is Intel. As pretty much announced, temperatures are of absolutely no concern here. The 12600K is easily cooled with close to any halfway decent cooler out there. While Intel, even with Alder Lake, fails to shine when it comes to power consumption, that's where AMD still clearly retains its crown, it must be said that the measured power draw isn't as bad as one might expect, especially not considering the 12600K beating the Ryzen 7 5800X performance-wise. So while you need to take a much closer look at those upper performance tiers, whether you're picking Intel or AMD for your next CPU, in this very tier, in which the i5-12600K resides, it's unbelievably easy to recommend buying the 12600K. Of course, AMD will hopefully not rest for too long and counterattack. We consumers, on the other hand, can rejoice. We're living through an exciting era when it comes to CPUs. With that being said, thank you so much for watching everyone and until next time.